Okay, so question whether each molecule is polar or nonpolar. So let's write out all the Lewis structures for each of these molecules. So when writing out Lewis structures, we need to find out the total number of valence electrons for each of these atoms. So sulfur has six valence electrons and chlorine has seven. Since there are two chlorine atoms, we multiply this by two. And when we add these values up, we get a total of 20 electrons. So first let's draw out a skeletal structure of sulfur bonded with two chlorines. So the reason why I picked sulfur as my central atom is because it is lower in electronegativity than my chlorines and also because it's able to form multiple bonds. So chlorine uh, typically only forms one bond. And I can also draw in all of the lone pairs on my chlorine atoms as well. So if I count out how many electrons I've drawn so far, and I recall that each bond contains two bonding electrons, then I have only drawn uh, 16 out of the 20 electrons I need for this structure. So for the remaining four, I'm just going to place them as lone pairs on my central sulfur atom. Okay, so when we want to find out whether a molecule is polar or nonpolar, we first need to find out if any of the bonds in the molecule are polar. So to do that, I need to look at the electronegativity difference between sulfur and chlorine. Just so we can see the electro uh, the polarity of these bonds. So here's an electronegativity value uh, periodic table. And if we find fluorine on it, oh, chlorine, sorry, it has an electronegativity value of three. And chlorine's electronegativity value is, oh, sulfur's, is 2.5. Okay, so the difference between them is 0 0.5. Therefore, the bond is polar. And we know that because our electronegativity value is greater than 0 0.4, but less than 1.69. Okay, so now that we know that the bond is polar, we can draw dipole moments going towards the direction of the chlorines. And you'll notice that the molecular uh, structure of sulfur dichloride is bent. So we have a bent structure. And it's due to the two lone pairs that are on our central sulfur atom. So since we have a bent structure, our dipole moments don't cancel out. So therefore, this molecule is also polar. So if we draw a net dipole moment, it kind of goes down like this. And we can ha say that we have a non-zero net dipole moment. Which tells us whether or not a molecule is polar or not. So we, if we had a zero net dipole moment, then we'd know that it is nonpolar. 
Okay, so that's for part A. And now let's analyze our second structure, which is sulfur tetrachloride. So again, we need to calculate the total number of valence electrons, sulfur having six, fluorine having seven, multiply the seven by four, and we get a total of 34 valence electrons. So again, I'm going to write my sulfur as my central atom, and then just four bonds to my chlorines, and I'll draw in all of the lone pairs. Okay, so if I count out how many electrons I've drawn so far, I only have 32 out of the 34 that I need for this structure. So my sulfur is going to have an extra pair of electrons on it, like so. So again, we calculated the electronegativity difference between sulfur and chlorine, and we know that it is polar. So if I kind of redraw this structure to kind of give a more accurate depiction of the molecule, the lone pairs would be like that, and then all my chlorines would be attached like this. And you can already kind of tell that we have a non-zero dipole moment again because of the lone pairs on the sulfur atom. So again, the dipole moments do not cancel out. So therefore, this molecule is also polar. So now let's look at our last structure, which is bromine pentachloride. And let's calculate the total number of valence electrons. So bromine has seven, and chlorine also has seven. And since there are five chlorine atoms, we multiply this by five. And if we were to add these up, we get a total of uh, 42 valence electrons. Okay, so now let's draw out its skeletal structure. We'll have bromine as our central atom. And then I'm just going to draw my five chlorines around it like this. And show all of the lone pairs. Okay, so if I count out all the electrons I have so far, I only have 40 out of the 42. So I need to draw my remaining two on my bromine. And this is kind of similar to our previous example where our central atom only has the one lone pair. So again, we have a non-zero dipole moment. So let me sketch out a more accurate depiction of its structure. We have the lone pairs up like this, and we have the five chlorine atoms pulling at the bromine. Then again, we have a non-zero dipole moment. So therefore, this molecule is polar 
as well. So now let's see what the junior tutor said. Uh, we first write the Lewis structure for each molecule, then using the Vesper theory, determine the molecular geometry and polarity of the molecule. Okay, so they have the correct Lewis structure. And notice that their dipole moments do not cancel each other out. Therefore, this molecule is polar. For the second molecule, they also have the correct Lewis structure and shown that it has a seesaw molecular geometry and that they are arranged asymmetrically. So the dipole moments don't cancel out. So therefore, this is polar as well. And the same thing goes for our last molecule. This has a square pyramid molecular geometry, which is arranged asymmet asymmetrically. So this solution is correct.